But real quick, before we jump into the content, I want to talk to you about something new that we have going on. So below, you're going to see a link below in the comments, uh, a link to our new private Facebook group. So we've got a GSD mode private Facebook group that's dedicated to those of you that like watching the show, that enjoy the show, that get value out of the show. It's a place for you to go to mastermind with other GSD mode fans. Um, you can go in there and make sure that you're not missing out in any of the content. All the episodes will be in there from leveling up to interviews. So to make sure that you're not missing out on the content, but again, gives you the opportunity to mastermind with other like-minded people. Uh, you guys can sit there and mastermind on how maybe the content interviews, that you, different things that you're applying to your life, what's working, what's not working, and gives you that place to go out there and mastermind. So click below, check that out. Also, any promos, specials that we have going on will be posted inside that group. And uh, we're going to be uh, creating some uh, private content that just will exist in that group. So make sure you click below. This is a private group. So click below. We'll make sure to get you approved right away and get you rocking and rolling inside the group. Uh, also, want to give our sponsors a quick plug that make all of this possible. Our first sponsor is Perfect Storm, www.perfectstormnow.com. It's the real estate software that I use in my business. Helps me go out there and generate well over 1,200 free leads every single month and over 30 paid leads every single day in my real estate, biz, uh, in my real estate business. It's the most effective, affordable lead generation, front-end branding website that exists out there. So go check us out, www.perfectstormnow.com. Also, my 90-day mastery bootcamp. If you're looking for a mentorship in your real estate business, if you're looking for a coach, it's by far the most effective, affordable, hardcore coaching platform that exists out there. I give you my whole entire playbook. I walk you through it. I show you what we're doing to go out there and sell over two homes every single day and what we're doing to go out there and, and, and produce at the high level that we produce. The whole entire program, you guys, is only 997 dollars. You know, right, this took me 11 years to learn this content. I've reinvested over $5.8 million back into my real estate business to learn this content. For only $997, I'm delivering it all to you three hours every single week of hardcore coaching Q&A, daily access to me throughout the program for a full 90 days. So go check that out, uh, www.90daymastery.com, promo code live mastery, all caps, all one word, all together. And if you go through that program, then you're given the opportunity. You don't have to move forward, but you get the choice to move forward to our private uh, mastery alumni group. Um, so that's continued mentorship for as long as they want to continue with me. We have two in-person masterminds. It's the only group that I do in-person live hardcore masterminds twice a year, 20 hours at each event. It's only 50 bucks a month, right? So if you want to take your life, your business to the next level, go check us out. All right, let's jump in today's content. Hopefully you guys enjoy this content as much as I enjoy it. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD interview. Every single week, we interview top entrepreneurs and just straight up top badasses. You guys are out there dominating their space. These are people that are choosing to not live life small, right? That are going out there, playing the game big, that are choosing to go out there and create epic lives for themselves and their family. So today, you guys, we've got an amazing guest on the show, serial entrepreneur, coach, overall badass in life, doing some massive things. So really excited and honored to have Elon Ferdman on the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Stoked to be here, man. Yeah, dude. Uh, you know, I, I've been excited to have you on the show. You know, you and I have a lot of commonalities, man. Yep. Kind of got our start in, in the real estate world, and and then it's it's led to a lot of different businesses. And I know you're doing a ton of different things today: coaching, consulting, um, serial entrepreneur, operating many different businesses. Before we jump into what you're doing today, though, dude, I'm really interested in what got you, um, what led to this journey in the first place. Like, what led you into entrepreneurship? Uh, I think my absolute disdain of people telling me what to do. I think that's a pretty standard entrepreneurial answer. Um, no, but seriously, I, I grew up uh, in a very, from day one, like as far as I can remember, while all my friends for summer jobs were looking for, you know, camp counselor jobs and things like that, I was out there trying to find jobs that didn't have a paycheck, that were commission based. And I remember. I talked some guy at the age of 16 to let me work for a telemarketing firm and I was winning every award because I just like, I didn't want someone to tell me what I was worth and I knew that I could bust my ass harder than anybody else. So I think that kind of started it. I got out of school and I got the job, you know, the real job that everyone's really proud of. And I was working, I was there for about three months. The guy calls me into the office and he goes, Elon, you've been doing such an awesome job and I really want to move you up and I want to put you on this big project. And I, I remember distinctly sitting there, I'm 21, 22 maybe, and I'm sitting in this is like the big office, you know, the big guy, whatever, and I'm sitting there and I'm going, 
All right, so this guy's got to be like 45, 50. This is it. Like, this is his life. This. So whatever he's telling me I'm working for, like, this is the ultimate. And I look at him, and I don't remember his name. I was just like, John, I got to get out of here. And he was just dumb. Like, what? I'm just, I'm telling you I want to promote you this. I was like, this is just not for me. And I went home. I had no backup plan. I had nothing. I just went home and I was like, I need to find a sales job because I need to get paid the amount of effort that I want to put in. That's that's what I want to get paid. So it's just kind of been odd and end things doing that. And uh, yeah, one great thing led to another. Here we are. Yeah. So so when you do when you do that transition, man, because you know we got a lot of listeners that are in that space that mm-hmm. are in the corporate world, but they got that internal battle going on. They know they're miserable. They know that entrepreneurship's for them, you know, but they're scared shitless of making that jump. And I get it. You're, you're leaving yeah. safety for that. So, you know, a lot of people talk about their successes, but what were some of those obstacles and, and things that you had overcome initially going through that journey? I mean, what was that like, you know, those first couple of years? It was really scary. Uh, my, well, I'll tell you one of my lowest points of my entire life. So me and my brother, in 2008, when the world financial world collapsed, I was in commercial real estate. Uh, we, we had probably 100 and I think 107 or something million in assets under management and the world collapsed, right? So we actually stayed afloat for about two years and I was dumping all my savings into this business because I was a partner trying to keep it afloat. And I realized that this was just a sinking ship. It was only a matter of time. At this point, I probably had maybe like 10 grand in the bank, right? So no, no real safety blanket. And uh, I I just started grasping at straws, trying to figure out what to do next. Uh, Now, during this time, I wasn't able to pay my mortgage. So we have a a big ass house, couldn't pay my mortgage. um, And I'll just little side tangent, I actually was so scared that I couldn't do it, I didn't even tell my wife that we weren't paying our mortgage. So my wife didn't even find out for probably about just shy of a year. Um, And she found out, not because I grew balls and told her, but because one day at 9.30 p.m. at night, while her grandparents were here, the doorbell rings and a man asked me, hey, are you Elon Ferdman? I say yes. And he goes, you've been served by Bank of America. And so at that point, I had to turn around and explain to my wife why we're being foreclosed on, which was the literally the worst moment of my entire life. Now we're at this point, me and my brother are in our company for probably about six months. We had started Satori Prime about six months earlier, not really making money. I mean, here and there, you know, but not really making money. And I remember before I turned around, just thinking to myself, Elon, like stop being and can I curse here? Yeah, let's get shit done, okay. man. <laughs> cool. Stop, stop being an asshole. Like, go get a a desk job. You know, even if you're making fifty, sixty thousand, like help your family. And you know, the ego and the voice is just screaming. It's like you're, you're an idiot. You're a moron. You're a loser. Da da da. And that was the moment. I remember I closed the door, and I just thought, I can't. I can't. I just know. I just know inside that this is exactly what I'm supposed to do. And I know that the universe or God or whatever you want to call it will provide for me and my family. We will get through this. But I know if I go get a stupid desk job, I'm selling out on who I am, that my soul will just be crushed. And so I had to have that conversation with my wife. Um, We just celebrated our five year anniversary this past June. And I haven't met, you know, I also have a podcast. I haven't interviewed or met a single entrepreneur who hasn't had a moment where you're right there. You're right there. You're like like at that precipice and then everything, the universe or God will send literally everything at you and go, are you sure you want to do this? Like, are you really, really sure? And I can't tell you how many people turn around at that moment. Because whatever that moment is, it's like, uh, it's going to be your scariest moment. It's going to be that thing that makes you feel the worst. Your ego will scream the loudest. And it's people that get to the other side of that, that, that have the life, that, that actually get to pursue this. Because after that, I mean, listen, life is always up and down. But that was really like the moment where it all started. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more, man. You know, you're, you're, you're totally right. Every... 
every uber successful self-made person man has, has had those low moments i've yet to meet anybody mm-hmm. with some hardcore virtues that that doesn't have some hardcore vices in, in their past you know and exist yeah. so so dude you have that low moment and you're like holy shit man i i got i gotta now now it's go time right what do you start immediately doing to get yourself out of that hole dude so few things one having that conversation with my wife was probably one of the most freeing things that happened because I personally believe that your success isn't necessarily predicated on the technical things that you're doing. I think 90 plus percent of it is based on your mindset and your energy and what you can put into things. Look, I've been a sales manager, right? And I know that people are doing the same things like guys and girls are on the phone, saying the same pitch, doing the same thing. Why is one person making half a million dollars, the other person's barely making a hundred thousand dollars? It has nothing to do with what they're doing. It has to do with their beliefs and what they're how they're showing up every day and the energy that they're putting in. So when I had that conversation with my wife, can you imagine for the for the last year basically, I'm trying to do something in my life and I'm just carrying this weight of I'm lying to my wife about not paying our mortgage. So just saying that and having a partner now on my team dealing with this massive issue, that was huge. So that was number one. Um, And then number two was at that point, I remember saying to my brother, I'm like, look, here's the game plan. By this date, I need to be putting in this amount of money. And we started working backwards and trying to figure out, okay, if this is the goal and this is what we want to do, how many sales do we need to make? How many does that break into on a daily? How many, like what conversations need to happen? What are the things that need to happen? And we got really granular and really serious. And I think when you, I heard this great story. There was like a master um, archer. He was like some Buddhist monk and he could literally, that, that was his practice. So he could hit anything from like a thousand yards away. It's just like perfect bullseye, bullseye, bullseye every time. And this guy that he was teaching for 20 some odd years has just always seen this. He's never misses. And so one day he takes him in the forest and he has a bullseye set up and he gets to about a hundred yards from it and he puts on blindfolds and he goes, you know, do you think I can hit it? And the guy's literally never seen a miss. And he goes, yeah, absolutely. And the guy pulls back and shoots and misses by, you know, few whatever yards. And the, the kid is stunned. And the guy turns to him and goes, it doesn't matter how well you know what you know. If you can't see where you're aiming, you'll never hit the target. And I think that's where we kind of, when we had started, we didn't really have a target because we didn't know what that target looked like. When this happened, I had just a blazing fire under my ass. And I knew exactly what I needed to do and by when. Um, and I think when you align with that and you kind of tell the the world and the universe, whatever, like this is what I'm going for. The angels are always behind you. They just want to see what you tell them to aim at. Like they will be there, but you got to know what the hell you're doing. Yeah. Um, so that was probably the biggest, biggest thing and that made the difference. So then, then talk about Satori Prime, man, because I know you're doing a lot of different things. You know, what, what did you guys kind of start off doing? And then now, I, I've never told you this story, dude, but how I found you is my Facebook ads manager account got shut down. Uh, because I'm out there um, promoting my podcast and Facebook took it as, you know, because I, I promoted some realtor that was, you know, how to make a hundred million dollars a year, blah, blah, blah. And they look at his multi-level marketing. Yep. Of course, they're like, well, there's no, you know, explaining yourself. It's over. Um, so I found one of your, it was like a Google Hangout with you and some other guys that were talking about how to recover this. And, and Oh, that's it, awesome. Yeah. So so I had no idea. I'm just thinking, how do I get my account back? And then I, I'm i sitting there listening. I'm like, dude, this guy, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's on his game. And, and so then that was probably 18 months ago, you know, right? So um, so I know you do a lot of different things today. Yeah. And I mean, one-on-one coaching to a lot of social media coaching. So talk yeah. about what did Satori Prime start as and and what does it evolve to today? Yeah, that's really good. And I want to just preface this as a context. Like, I think you have to get as an entrepreneur into the flow of it. If you try to muscle something and push something into what it you think it needs to look like, you miss a lot of opportunities. So the funny thing is we actually created Satori Prime because what we wanted to do was be coaches we wanted to because personal development is something we started in 2003 
Um, and we just loved it. We were coaching people for free for a decade and just, it just fulfilled me. You know, I was making money in, in commercial banking and I was just doing that because that fed my soul. So Satori Prime, the idea was we'll build this coaching business. Then first thing in, we're like, okay, we're not going to go out into the street and say, hey, do you want to coach? You know, do you want a life coach or this and that? Marketing is the answer, right? So we started doing marketing and we loved it. We just loved marketing. We got good at it. So we kind of started, I think like most people did in that space, affiliate marketing. We kind of worked with some companies, did some of that stuff, got good at it pretty fast. That led to some you know, miraculous things that we figured out, started working with some really big clients back in the day, like Jonathan Budd and Mark Hoverson and Ann Sieg and people like that we were running traffic for. Um, that led into us producing our own products. That led to us creating masterminds around Facebook, which we still run, you know, how to basically become kind of like a Facebook agency or become a master uh, marketer in Facebook. And now, five years later, we're going back to what it is that we came here to do, which is we've automated kind of the affiliate marketing and online marketing and agency side. That whole stuff is kind of like running in the background. And what we're doing now is we're going into really, really high end executive coaching. So like $50,000 a year plus per client. And then we have some tier down, tier down, tier down, tier down pro group coaching that we do for $200 a month. So that's what, you know, someone asked me the other day is like, what would you love to do? And this is what I love to do. I love to wake people up. I love to transform people's lives and not just around business. You know, the, I have clients that are billionaires and they work with me because their relationships are amiss or their health isn't exactly where they want it to be. Just because you're successful and you make money, doesn't mean you're a 10 in every area of your life. And we work with people that want to be a 10 in every area of their life with no, they, they absolutely will not settle for less because once they realize like I'm a badass at this, but these other areas, I'm really not. They kind of have that mentality. Like I want to be a badass in everything, right? Entrepreneurs, I think do that. Like, look, you're super fit, right? Yeah, you work your ass off like 14, 15, 16 hours a day. You still find time to be really fit because that's how we operate. Um, so that's funny, it's like five years later, we're doing now what we wanted to do in the beginning. But like I said, if we were just head down, like we're just gonna be life coaches, we're just gonna be life coaches, we would have missed so many opportunities and we wouldn't have had the life lessons I think necessary to even build this kind of business. So um, yeah, that's primarily I think right now is like marketing, consulting, coaching, and executive high-end coaching and then kind of like the bottom tier is group coaching and now like live events and things like that. Yeah, I love it, man. So um, for those that are, that are watching and listening, you know, because I mean, dude, social media and a lot of our listeners are in the real estate space. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, I know for my business right now, well over 25% of my business comes from Facebook alone, right? It's, it's something that everybody awesome. needs to be incorporating and doing at a high level, but there's very few people that really know the game. You know, right? So yes. if one of our listeners is like, dude, you know, I want to go out there and learn it the right way. Um, what's the best place to, to learn more about you, to go check out your products, check out your coaching platforms um, for them to go visit? I'll tell you the simplest thing. The, the site is actually being revamped. So like in a month or two, it'll be totally different. But if you just go to satoriprime.com, um, it's really easy to navigate. You can kind of tell us what you want. You know, is it like mindset stuff you're looking for? Is it Facebook marketing stuff you're looking for? And then once you select it, you get like a customized process that we will take you through. So the easiest place would just be satoriprime.com and uh, pick kind of the track that you're most looking for. I will tell you that if you're someone looking to kind of start out, you haven't done any Facebook marketing or anything like that, Whereas three and a half, four years ago, I would have told you, you know, take 300 bucks a month and just go try it. Like you'll figure it out. Today, it's become so complex. The competition is insane. I think for someone not to go get educated, um, spend some time with a mentor. Like what we do is, I think the, the best value is a 90 day boot camp where we basically walk you through the process. So we have $10,000 clients, for example, on the agency side, the same process that we onboard them with, we teach you 
how to do that for yourself or someone in your agency or company to learn and do that. I think that's the best bang for the buck. Um, I think info products when it comes to Facebook, you know, I think it's a good start. It'll give you the fundamentals and it'll probably get you 80% there. But if you're not going to do a live mentorship with someone around Facebook, you're pretty much going to get your ass handed to you when you go out there. Um, it's just, it's become much tougher. Like the competition's much tougher. Facebook's much tougher about what they'll allow and won't allow. I mean, when I started, it was the wild west. I mean, people were just like, it didn't matter what you were selling. You just put a chick with boobs and like red arrows and you know, you made money. Um, clicks were super cheap. I, I mean, if I was paying 35 cents per click back then, that was the most expensive during the most competitive times. If you're getting 35 cent clicks today, you're just like, yeah. this is amazing. Um, it's just changed a lot. So I would say just like in real estate, right? I, I, you don't go and buy houses or start an investment portfolio without working with someone that's done it. Like that would just be suicide, especially because there's so many people who are super, super smart. Um, I would do the same thing with Facebook. Yeah, love it, bro. Love it, man. So um, when you were, when, you know, you had your original vision for Satori um, or for, for Story Prime, and then you kind of went on this detour, did you keep that same vision or did you kind of lose sight of that vision and then you just wound up where that original vision was? Great question. Really good question. So I think there's a couple of things that, that uh, we did that are really important as just a human being. I think there's a vision and a mission of what we are committed to. And that's never changed. Our mission statement is to wake people up, to show you that there's a life possible that you never dreamed was possible. That's always been our thing. Now, it has different expressions, right? When we were good at getting really good at marketing, marketing set us free. I mean, I think it doesn't matter what you do. You could be making pizzas, sandwiches, jewelry, shoes. I don't care what you do. If you don't learn marketing, you're going to be left in the absolute dust in the next five to 10 years. 85% of business is drummed up on these things today. These things like 85%. That means that if you don't understand how to use this thing or the marketing of it, um, you're screwed. Like there's no business that you can build that's going to survive. So I think marketing is really important. And when we got how important that was, we were like, well, we can teach this to other people and that would set them free. Right. Because you asked me a question before when someone's transitioning or someone's afraid to, to leave their corporate job or do this. Guess what? Educate yourself. Like, don't jump off from a moving train to ground. That's dumb. But invest time. You come home at seven, great. You have kids, you have a wife, be with them for two hours and then go hustle for the next three to four and learn something. It's not gonna just magically happen. Me and my brother worked 16 hours for six days a week for two and a half years when we started building our business. Did we build it faster than most? Yeah, because we fucking spent 16 hours a day for six days. You know, will it take you longer if you're spending four hours? Sure, but who cares? Your next five to 10 years are coming whether you do something about them or not. Like leaving your job is not necessarily what you need to do, but educate yourself, you know, listen to podcasts, hire mentors, do the stuff, start building that train. I wish I had that opportunity. I literally jumped off like a speeding bullet train to dead ground and then have to figure out how to build a train to, to start moving again. I would not recommend that. Like go out, do the work, start building something. Like my parents, for example, great example. Been talking about real estate investment for the last, I don't know, 10 years. I finally sat with them one night and I'm like, you do know that Guy and I actually coach people on how to start pursuing things, right? And they're like, yes. I'm like, you do know that what we tell people is to just start educating themselves. And so they went out, they just, they were like, huh. They started reading books, they started going to live events, they started hiring mentors. This is all in a span of a year, they own four properties already. Uh, yeah. Right, I'm like, just, and, and is it, they're still working, okay? But now instead of weekends sitting around watching TV, that time is spent educating themselves. But guess what? They're 50, 
55, 56, and 57. And like by the time they're 65, they're actually gonna have a nest egg while all these other people are gonna get to 65 and go, well, fuck, I can't live on this, you know, thousand dollars, whatever the government's gonna give me. So I I just think education is everything. And like when when we realized that, that was our self-expression. Like that's how we woke people up. And I think that message has changed over time, but the mission, the vision, like who we want to be in the world has never changed. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what I love about you, man, and one of the things that, um, you know, dude, there's so many coaches and quote unquote gurus that are, that are, you know, charlatans, oh. if you will, a lot of smoke and mirrors, mm -hmm. you know, they talk about the importance of self-development, but uh, they're not out there being developed themselves, right? So you're a guy yep. that not only does it, but you believe in it so much. And we were talking before this started, I mean, you're investing multiple six figures a year being coached yourself and leveling up, you yeah. know? So you're, you're, you're a dude that obviously is leveling up and and, and um, living what you're, you're talking and preaching, you know, right? That's it. And it's hard. I agree with you 100%. It's, it's hard to find people like that. And even if you find people that are successful or do something well, they suck at transferring that information and that that sucks in its own right. Or they were good at it at one time, but they're not anymore. So yeah, you have to be really careful. I think, you know, for people like you and I, we have networks, we have connections. Our, our worlds are kind of small, as, as even you mentioned. And we can find out about, we don't have to kind of search for those people. We can literally tap into our market and be like, hey, I need the best person in this, the best person in that. And you ask six of your friends and four out of the six are saying the same person. You're like, okay, that's my person. Then you go interview them, you figure it out. When we started, we didn't have that. It was just kind of like shooting darts and hoping that you win. Uh, but it's, it's changed. And, and I think that's really available to anyone. I mean, something that I'm, it didn't matter how hard we, like how fast we grew and how much money we made and all this stuff. Like my thing is, I actually care about the people I work with. From the people that spend, you know, thirty dollars with me to the people that spend fifty thousand dollars with me. Obviously, I'm giving more time to the people that spend fifty thousand. But I answer emails personally. I respond to people. I'll get on the phone with people. Like I, I don't know where the magic is going to happen from. I don't know which conversation is going to set the whole thing free. So I just have them. And I, my, my thing is leave every single person way better than when you first interacted with them. And I just believe that if I keep doing that over and over and over and over again, not only will the world be a better place, but when we're talking about like money, add more value, your bank account shows. Like that's, that's it. Yeah, love it, man. So, um, you know, the word hustle, and, and grind mm -hmm. in the entrepreneur space, dude, it's become like this big fad. You know, and people mm -hmm. go in and they work their 10 hour days like, oh man, I'm hustling, I'm grinding, you know? And I know you talked about this uh, uh, a little bit ago of, of your 16 hour days, six days a week, but you know, walk us through, I mean, what was that grind and hustle? Because if people see you today, Right? They didn't see what you went through. They see you now yep. out there, you know, driving red Ferraris <laughs> and on the yeah. beach and all this shit. But, not but that, mine, but yeah. yes. <laughs> but but that that's not you know that's not a picture of, of the reality of, of what got you to this place. So just so people are truly prepped, I mean, what does that grind look like um, to go out there? Like, what do they really need to be prepped for? Because I believe that you know ninety percent of entrepreneurs fail not because of lack of capital. It's because they're not taking enough action. Yeah. Well. So it's really interesting because I yesterday I was having this conversation with Marcy and so me and my brother are immigrants. Okay, we, we came here. I was eight. He was I was almost eight. He was five. My parents came here with nothing. My, they were probably making a combined, I don't know, like four hundred dollars a week when we moved here in eighty nine. I was busting my ass with my dad outside, you know, fixing shit around the house. Like that's my life. So my idea of how to move forward in life and how to succeed was work really hard. That was just programmed into me. What I'm realizing now, and I know this might go against kind of the whole hustle grind it out thing and what I just told you about 16 hour days and this and that is as I was going through this process, there's this, and this might be like way above people's head, but I'm just going to go there anyway. I personally believe there's this flow of life. There's this energy of life 
that the masters get to tap into. People like the Einsteins and the Mozarts and the Michael Jordans of the world, they tap into this ether of just brilliance. Now, I'm not saying they don't work their ass off. I'm just saying they tap into this like what I've started calling effortless magic space. It's the space in which you do all of the internal work and you just like, it's like if you can imagine, um, you know, that in banks, they had those kind of like things that you would shoot. You'd put your checks in that thing and it was like vacuum suction, you know, okay. So I, the way I envision it is like, we're all souls having a physical experience. We're not just human beings, right? So, I mean, human doings like this, this, a soul trapped in this body, right? To have a certain experience. I personally believe we're all still connected to, to that place up there with, imagine like this tube. Okay. And this tube is always trying to send you messages and opportunities and people and things like that. The problem is that it's mucked up. It's mucked up with all our disbelief, all our limiting thoughts, all our bullshit that we bought in like hard work. I'm not saying that that's not real. What I'm saying is my version of hard work of like, that's the only way you can imagine like that mucks up that thing because other people, you know, like Marcy is a great example. Like she fucking says things into existence and they just happen. Now she put in a lot of work and effort to clean up that funnel to herself. So my relationship to hustle has shifted. Um, I think there's working really smart and I think there's just working really hard. Yep. You know, uh, you probably heard that story about the, the two guys chopping down trees and the one guy is just sharpening his ax every time the other guy looks. And then at the end of the day, he's cut way more trees. I really believe in that. I, I just think the more you tap into your God power, the more life happens to you, the more opportunities and people and, and things are just magnetized to you. And so for a long time, even though I knew that stuff, I was like, I got to do this. I got to do that. And every day was just like, do, 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 right? Like that immigrant <laughs> Russian mentality. Um, today, I don't, I don't work that way. Today, I spend my time, I spend it differently. I'm like clearing out the shit that is me in my own way. And that's, I don't know if you would call that hard work necessarily, but that's the work I'm more interested in today than when I was just like grinding, 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 grinding. And, and I agree with you. I think the whole hustle grind thing is just, I don't know. Thanks to Gary Vee, I think it's just become very, very played. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it, man. Love it, dude. So, um, you know, you mentioned earlier that a lot of you, you got coaching clients that reach out to you that they're crushing it, killing it in business, mm -hmm. but they're miserable because maybe their health sucks, their relationship sucks, they don't mm -hmm. know their kids. Um, how do you personally uh, uh, keep that balance? Because I know that you're, you're married, you've got a family, um, yep. you also, dude, are a guy that's in epic shape, like you, you've got that, that, I hate the word balance, but you've been able to not neglect any of those those areas. How do you, in your own personal life, um, make sure that those areas aren't getting out of alignment? I'm gonna say one word and then I'll explain it, urgency. I don't think anything in our lives gets done if it's not urgent to us. So the problem for most people is they can't focus on multiple areas. And I think that's just a human trait and I'm okay with that. When we started building our business for two years, I pretty much sat at a desk or on a couch or whatever in my house. I didn't work out. I didn't work out at all. And it got to the point where at some point I, I was playing tennis, I hurt something in my elbow and my friend's like, you got to start working out to, to work out the muscles. And I was like, oh, all right, whatever. Because in my head I was like, I don't have time for this, right? I just need to focus. Like this is the only thing I have to do. So I, I just didn't have time for it. That hurt, right? Now it became urgent for me to fix this. I And I swear to God, I and I was in good shape. Like I worked out all through college. I was in good shape. And I <laughs> I went to do push-ups. I swear to God, I couldn't do 10 push-ups. And I was so embarrassed and disgusted and just like 
holy shit, what did you let yourself do? That it became urgent for me to do it. So I struggled for the first three weeks to like get my body in shape and then I haven't, I literally haven't stopped since. Um, family, right? My wife, when, when we were together and married, I'm clear that it's not like a lot of people compartmentalize life. I have my kids, I have my wife, I have my health, I have my job, I have my friends, like all this stuff. I don't believe in any of that. I believe we have one life. And I believe every single area of your life impacts all the other areas. Your relationship with your wife sucks, your business is gonna suck. Now, it might not suck now and you're like, you don't wanna be at home because something's, you know, you're not saying something or something hasn't been said or there's some whatever there. And so you spend time here because this is where the ego gets like stroked and it's like, oh, you're doing so good here, Elon. But I promise you that all of these areas are linked. And like, whether it's, God forbid, cancer or a death or something happens and your whole fucking world is gonna blow up and you're gonna be like, oh shit, I neglected that area. So I'm, for me, when you talk about balance, I don't even see it as balance. I just see it as life. Like I wanna be excellent at life. That means physically, mentally, all relationships. I, one of my biggest things is like, I do not have unsaid things or withholds or things like that in my relationships. I don't because I know that's a cancer waiting to happen. So I go through my day every day. I'm like, did I wrong anybody? Did I fuck anybody over? Did I say something that hurt somebody's feelings? And I go and handle it because I know if I don't handle it now, two years from now, it's going to be a big thing to handle. Like everything in life is a lesson. At first, it's going to come as like a little cat and it's going to be like, oh, cute. And here's your lesson. If you don't, if you don't hear that, it'll send, you know, a wolf. If you don't hear that, it'll send something else till eventually a fucking lion is coming out of the bushes, like mauling your throat and you're like, oh my God, right? And then you notice it and then it becomes urgent. I think every single human being goes to bed. If you stay up at night, think about what keeps you up at night, <laughs> right? Like there are thoughts that keep you up at night. That's because it's unfinished business. It's because you're not handling that. If people are showing up in your life and you keep hearing these messages about your health, or about your relationships, or about your finances, or whatever, open your ears and start listening. They're like angels being sent to you now, because at some point, it's gonna be a very violent shakeup, and you're gonna hit a tree at 70 miles an hour, and then you're gonna wake up and go, what the fuck have I been doing? Like, I gotta do something a different way. Don't wait for that moment to happen. Um, and that's my thing, like, that's why it's urgent for me to make sure my body's in shape. It's urgent for me to be incredible father to my kids. And I know I'm gonna mess them up a million different ways, but like I'm working on being the best that I can. My relationship with my wife, my relationship with my parents, my relationship with her parents, my brother, people that I work with, it's really important to me because I believe it's all tied into one thing. If I'm just focused on money or if I just focus on things, that's where people are unfulfilled anyway. Like the people I work with make a ton of money and they get there and they go, I kind of thought it'd be different. I'm like, no, cause you're still the same person. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I've been there, yeah. man. I've been, you know, I've been the point where I'm, and this is, I don't know, shit. I'm probably 28 years old making like 780 grand a year and I'm just freaking miserable. You know, right? Yeah. The money's good, but everything gets out of alignment and uh, no, it, it exists, man. 100%. So yeah. um, do you have, um, you know, a, a personal routine that you follow, you know, to go out there and put yourself in your most really effective and efficient space. I do, I do. And this is actually fairly recent. Um, I noticed there's a few things that really, for me, for me work. I'm not saying like this is everyone should do this, but for me really work. One is constant education. So I love reading books. I love listening to books, uh, podcasts different programs, things like that. I just love it. And I noticed that balance, right? Like I noticed that I was dropping that off in order to have more conversations with people, in order to have more client calls, things like that. But there's a sacrifice to that because I'm not as effective at all these other things when I'm not feeding. Like if there's no input, the output stays the same. So I'm it's very important for me to get more input. So I was like, hmm, how do I do this? And I love sleep. I think we spoke about this. You wake up at like four, right? Yeah, three. 
three jeez, you badass man um yeah you want to know why he gets results that's why <laughs> so um i love sleep and i was waking up with my kids at 7 30 like they would wake up at 7 30 come into my room and that's that was my wake up so i was like nah, i need to figure out time so i wanted to start a meditation practice so i started waking up at five not three five um and I can meditate now for 30 to an hour, like 30 minutes to an hour every morning. I kind of let myself go as long as I want. And then whatever time I have left, like that hour, hour and a half, um, I'll do some visualization stuff. I'll do some gratitude stuff. And then I will read. I will. And, and I, I prefer to actually physically read in the morning uh, because I listen to audiobooks like throughout my day and working out and things like that. But I, I, I like the actual practice of, of reading. And that has made such a huge difference. I can't even tell you what a difference it makes to start your day on your own terms, not reacting to all of these other inputs. It's like, that's my time. I sit there, I quiet the mind, I create my, like meditate. I don't even think about my day. I don't think about what I gotta do or how I gotta do it. Then I input all of this amazing information and like, masters of the world, like just dropping knowledge in my brain. By the time my kids wake up, I'm like on fire already, just ready. And then I'm excited about my day. Like today, you know, before we got on a call, I, ha I did that routine, got my kids to camp, went and played tennis in the morning um, and then came here and did this. So like I haven't touched a lick of my own work, quote unquote, today. Yeah. Yep. So I, I just think if you can give yourself that morning routine and for people that work, by the way, like you want to learn how to move forward or do something new, that's your time. It's either like early morning or late at night, you choose, but that's where you can grab that extra piece of life that other people aren't. And just by the virtue of you doing that, okay, maybe I'll take you a year, two, three, who gives a shit, right? Like. Three years from now, your life could be completely different. And what? You took another two, three hours in the morning or two, three hours a night? Like, if that's not worth it to you, I don't think that you think that you're worth it. That That's, I mean, there's no other way around it. Yeah, love it, bro. Um, all right, dude, so, I mean, you got a lot going on, right? And I'm sure that you get to a point where you, you reach a level of success that opportunities are are, are pitched at you constantly. You know, yep. like what, what do you have a process or how do you know what to say yes to and what to say no to to make sure that you're allocating your time and your focus on the things that, that truly matter? It's a great question. So someone, I asked someone a question and they answered this. So I, I said to them, how would you define success? And he actually said, you say no more than you say yes. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it really is. I think saying no, there's two things. It's a function of your value and your self-worth, right? When you're starting out, you tend to say yes to everything because you come from a lack of mentality. You come from a, I need money, I need to get here. And so you say yes to a lot of stuff. You get to then a point where you're like, well, I kind of don't need the money and these people are assholes, like I don't want to work with them. Um, for me, the process tends to be, and this might sound like a little woohoo-y for people, I kind of feel, I meditate, I ask, I feel, and I, I've learned to trust my gut more than any other thing. Like when I quiet my mind and I can check in with my gut, it'll tell me, Elon, this is right. Now, uh, this is what I was saying to, to you earlier. We just hired a coach for $300,000 a year. Guess what? My body, the inside is freaking the fuck out. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? We don't need this. Are you crazy? Like, do you know how much money that is? But it's like going crazy, right? That's that's what's happening here. But I know that here, like this part pulls. It, it feels like it's pulling me into that direction. And every time I've trusted that, while all this nonsense is going on, amazing stuff has happened. Amazing stuff has happened. So does our questions are, does this align with our mission, right? Our mission is to wake people up to a life possible that they never dreamed possible. So is this feeding that? And if I'm quieting the mind, because anything that's worth doing will scare the shit out of you, trust me, like it just does. When, when I could put all that aside, does this feel like this is where I need to be? 
Um, and that's honestly, that's my process today. It's, it's not as like, I don't sit there with a spreadsheet and I'm like, oh, you know, so, okay, if we carry the six and the, I, I don't do that uh, because it's never worked for me. Like logicking or reasoning shit always always led me to bad decisions. Um, trusting my heart, my gut has always led me to amazing things. Um, and that's that's basically my process. Yeah, and I, and I think that some people may be listening to that, like they may not be able to grasp that, but I think the reason that you're able to do so is because you're so clear on what mm -hmm. you truly want in your business and on your mission, you know, right? So, yeah. Um, I find that, uh, not I find, I mean, it just exists in the world, right? Good becomes the worst enemy to greatness. It's so easy to get caught up in this whole good enough, you know, you start mm. making good money and, and you kind of can lose that hunger, right? Um, we see a lot of people just kind of die off with that. What keeps you do? Because you're at a point in life where you could just, hey, we got our products, we got everything on autopilot, I can just kind of chill and things could be good enough for the rest of my life. What keeps you, dude, leveling up and, and going out there and growing inside your world? My mission is to transform the world, like literally transform the world. I will do that till the day I die. Um, and for me, it's just, there's no external thing that I'm working on. It's just always here. Like, how do I become a better coach? How do I become a better human being? How do I become a better father? How do I become a better husband? How do I become a better son and brother? That's what's important to me. There's never, like I'm never gonna get to a place where I'm the, the, the best that I can be at that. Cause there's always that next level, you know? It's like the, the analogy of the onion. There's always a next layer. There's always a next thing. Um, it just stopped being about getting the, the reward from the external. Like I don't need my bank account to prove it to me. I don't need a car in my driveway to prove it to me. And I have all those things and, and they're nice. I like, don't get me wrong, I fucking love money. I do, I love what it offers. And I love that it gives me the opportunity, like I said to you before, you know, to take a week off, go to Ibiza with my friends, and I li I'm not kidding, during that week, I answered three emails. Like three emails is what I did for work. That's amazing, and that's not my goal. My goal is have more experiences, take other people on experience, wake up more people. When 100 million people, I know I've impacted 100 million people, I'm not gonna be like, I'm out. I'll be like a billion, <laughs> you know? Like, it's never gonna end for me. I just think when it's about money, it's not a good enough why. It's not a good enough thing because you'll get there and you'll feel as empty, if not more empty, than when you created that goal. If you make it about other people, if you make it tied into something that you're really passionate about, you'll, I mean, there's, there's videos of surfers, like surfers who are 85 years old who act like 17 year old boys. Why? Because they're doing what they love. Every day they get to go out and do what they love. Like they, they've built their life around that. And trust me, I'm sure that 85 will tell you like, he can still get better at surfing, right? And, and I, that, that to me, I think it's not about how, I think it's like, what are you focused on? What is the thing that you want to level up in? And like, that I think is the more important. It's like when, when, the, when the why is big enough, the how just, just happens. It's, it's easy. Yep. Love it, man. So, you know, I know you're, you, you're big in self-development. You talked about reading. Um, what are, let's just talk about, I, I hate when I get asked, like, what are your top reads? You know, because it's like, dude, there's so many great ones. What have, <laughs> what have been your top reads of 2016? Oh, I got a ton. Um, by the way, so like I was talking about reading, right? So I'm a slow reader. I suck. I, and that's why I listen to audiobooks, Audible, you know, I can listen to like 2X, 3X, etc. Um, I found ways to speed up podcasts on my phone and, and videos on my phone, like all that stuff. So reading for me has kind of become a new thing. I, I'm at a point right now where I'm basically uh, reading a book a week. So I went from reading something like a book a month-ish to now a book a week. And, and then like all the other podcasts and info stuff. So on the personal development side, um, I'd say there's two books that are just absolute musts. Uh, they're both by Michael Singer. One is called The Untethered Soul. 
which is kind of my new Bible when it comes to that world. Um, and then the other one he wrote is The Surrender Experiment, and they're both brilliant. Untethered Soul is more the information. Uh, Surrender Experiment is Michael Singer's life experience and how he obtained that information. I don't care which order you read them in, they're absolute musts. Um, from a personal, uh, how I operate and like kind of like business structure type stuff, uh, personal Kanban, 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 K-A-N-B-A-N, has been revolutionary in the way I structure my day. Um, and marketing, like I, I like real human behavior stuff, like neuroscience, human behavior, stuff like that. Um, the Winner's Bible by Kerry Speckman was really, really good. And uh, Culture Code was a really, really good marketing book. Badass, love it, man. So um, a question I get all the time, um, and, and, and you know, these aren't questions I usually ask on the podcast, but, dude, I know that you coach in this space, so, uh -huh. so uh, I'm going to hit you with some of these, man. So a question I get from um, a lot of male entrepreneurs, right, that are drivers, that they want to go out there and do all this, but they're, they're, they're like, dude, I want to go out there and grind and do all this, but I can't get buy-in from my spouse. You know, mm. like, like how, how do you get that? Because it's tough, dude, because, you know, I know for me, when I started grinding, my wife's like, what, you don't want to be around me and the kids? You know, how, how do you have those conversations and get that support and get that buy-in? Because like you said, man, if you don't have that support, it's very difficult to go out there and, and achieve success. 100%. I, I will tell you that if you're trying, I, this is my coaching to people that do it. If you're buying a business, if you're starting a business and your spouse doesn't know about it or is not on board, you're fucked. Like, I don't care how you structure it. If you think, oh, I'll just get it to a point where it's making so much money and she'll be like, oh my God, that's amazing. Not going to happen. Just not going to happen. There's an energistic thing in the world. If your wife thinks that you're taking time away from her to invest in something, guess what? That's going to be friction. And like energistically, you're not going to be able to build something when that's there. So for me, when I was doing this, right, like my house, I told you, my house was literally being foreclosed on. I had to have this conversation with my wife, who at the time would have been a million percent justified to be like, go get a job. Like, we're done. This is done. You tried, you did it for six months, like you're done. You have to create partnership. You have to get the other person involved. And together, you get to create a vision, okay? So there's you, there's your spouse, and then there's the relationship. You get a vote, the spouse gets a vote, the relationship gets a vote, right? So you always have to look at what is the best for this triangle of, of sorts. I had a conversation with my wife. I put all my cards on the table. I said, what would I believe, what I expected? And then we created a vision together of like where we want it to be five years from now, okay? Now, for a lot of couples, there are mandatory things like this is a must, and there are kind of negotiable things. So for us, we created a structure where it was mandatory for me to be at dinner with the family. Okay? It was mandatory for me to help to put the kids to bed. It was mandatory that we had a date night. Okay, Then the other stuff, I was like, can I carve out time from here? Can I carve out time from here? Can I carve out time from here? And that's how we made it work. Like Together, we actually created a structure that she's okay with, I'm okay with, and the relationship is okay with. Now, you also give them permission that if you fall out of line, like if I miss dinners, or if I start traveling excessively, or all that stuff, she can rein me in. Because that's the agreement. So you either like renegotiate the agreement, but the agreement is this, 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 and this. So before I make another step in any direction, like I'm very clear on this is the world, if I want to live out of that, now I have to go get an exception, right? So I'm keeping her happy on the terms that she's said yes to. And if I'm not, she has the right to bitch slap me and like bring me back in and that's fine. 
Now, if it doesn't work, right, like you can always renegotiate. I personally believe everything can be handled in a conversation and it might not take one. It could take four or 10. It doesn't matter. Do it till it's solved or resolved or complete or whatever it is for you. But do not. And I agree with you, Josh, 100 percent. Do not try to do this on your own. They will. First of all, women are much better manifestors than men. They're just like emotionally connected. They just are. So if she doesn't want shit to happen in your life, it will not happen in your life. Like whether you try to move mountains or not. And I'll tell you a funny story. Like when I got my wife on board to goals, like like monetary goals. And we were like, here's the numbers we want to hit in our uh, business. Here are the things we want to do. And I would work with her and I'd be like, honey, I want you to focus on this with me. And like I gave her the numbers and all this stuff. I shit you not every time, quarter of the time to get the results that we wanted every time. Yeah, I love it, man. So, we, we, you know, because I know you coach a, a lot of guys in that space. You probably have this conversation a lot with them. Do you think that uh, with a lot of dudes, it's um, that they don't know how to have the conversation or is it the ego that keeps them from really having those conversations of like, uh, well, I'm not going to be told what to do. And is, is it the ego that fucks them up or, or is it really just the unknowing of how to have those conversations? I think it's a mix of both. I think a lot of the times people are unrelated to the fact that the ego is the thing that's driving them, right? If you don't know that the words coming out of your mouth are driven by ego of trying to look good, um, fear, greed, like if you don't know that the words are coming from that, the way I explain it to people is imagine that there's a huge white kind of like movie screen behind you, okay? And people have a sixth sense. You, you've all met these people. Like I'm sure you guys are in real estate. So you definitely met people who are saying all the right things. Like every word out of their mouth is, is appropriate. It's good. It's smart. And you're like, I'll never fucking work with that person ever. Because something inside goes, nah, no. Like they're, they're, you know, they're like either a D bag or like they're, they're shysters, whatever. How? How do you know that? So the way I envision it is, It doesn't matter what words come out of your mouth. It's the stuff that happens in the background. It's like the ego projects all this stuff onto a screen and that's what people can read. So if you're trying to pull one over on your wife, right? She's going to know if you're trying to like shadily do something by like she's going to know. Right? So just a quick tip about how to have any, any like uncomfortable conversation you know that certain people are going to react certain ways, especially people like spouses. You know them so well. You know what buttons push. You know that if you say certain things, they're going to probably make it mean this, this, and this. Tell someone what it's not before you tell them what it is. So if I'm having a conversation with someone, I'll always say, look, I'm, I need to tell you something. And... I don't want you to hear it as this, this, or this, because you know like, oh, she might react this in this way, right? So if I'm having a conversation, for example, about needing to travel more, taking more time or whatever, when we haven't like set up my business conversation, it's like, look, baby, I need to have a conversation with you. Here's what this is not is, I don't love you any less. It's not that I want to spend less time with you. You know, like you tell them all the things that you think are already going to be their concerns. So then they can listen from what it actually is, right? I'm committed to our future. Like we have this plan to do this, this, and this. Where I'm at right now, I can't make that happen. Or it's gonna take me a lot longer. So my request, and again, it's a request. It's not like, honey, this is what I'm fucking doing. Like that just doesn't work. I mean, I don't know how many women people are with. Like I, I that doesn't work with women. So when you tell them, I have a request and I want to figure out how we can make this happen together. Can we have that conversation to figure out a strategy to make this happen? Get them involved because now their mind share is in it, right? It's not like, honey, this is how it's going to go. I mean, think of like, even any human being. If you're told this is how it is, your initial reaction is, fuck that. Right. So that's when people like heels get dug in and, and like there's no real conversation. So realize that where like the stuff that's in the background is always there. Tell them what it's not first, then tell them and incorporate them into the decision, into like the structure of it and be open 
to it not looking exactly how you want. So if I go to my wife and I go, honey, there's this amazing event. I really want to go to it. I know that my commitment is not to be away from home for more than five days at a time. Having said that, here's the situation, this, this, and this. Can we make this work? And she just will throw like all the things at me that why can't work or this or that or that. And I'm like, can we find a solution for that? So, you know, like getting my kids to school. Can we find a driver? Yeah, found a driver. Can we do this? Right. Like and you work it with them through it, then they're on board and it's great and everyone's great. And you get to go to this event or do that thing or whatever with your wife's support instead of just like you screwed me, you know, like you don't love me. You're not around. Things like that. Yep. Love it, dude. Love it, man. A um, couple last questions for you, dude. And, mm-hmm. and I know you're a busy man. I could sit here and pick your brain literally all day, but I know you got uh, shit to do. So a couple last questions though for you, man. Um, if something happened and uh, you, you lost everything, right? 2008 rewind, you know, rewound, uh, yeah. uh, re- replay, right? Family's good. Health is good. But now at this point, you retained all the knowledge that you've learned over all these years from all these ventures. Um, and let's say a little to, I mean, a few hundred bucks left over in the bank account. What's the first few things you would immediately do to go out there and rebuild this massive business that you built? Um, you know, at, at this point, it's so like when you understand marketing, it's so easy. I would like literally the first thing I would do is I would put together an offer, whether it's coaching or executive coaching or something. I throw together a webinar and then just promote it, get people in there and I have money in a second. Um, also from a standpoint of just marketing knowledge and things like that, um, look, I, I there's two things that no one can ever take away from you. Like you said, your knowledge and your network, like your relationships, right? When I started in 2010, when we started the 2011, when we started the business, like I had none of that. Right, I, I was walking into a new world. I had nothing. I had no information, no knowledge, etc. Today, if you took everything away from me, honestly, I believe within like three to five phone calls, I'll be right back on my feet. Um, and, and my other thing is that shit doesn't scare me anymore. Like, I know that if everything got taken from me, it got taken from me for a reason. I had golden handcuffs in commercial real estate, like legit golden handcuffs. I had a great life, like financially sick. And I would have done that for the rest of my life. Meanwhile, my soul, who I know is on this planet to transform the planet, would have just been dying like a slow, painful death that would have ended with me probably having cancer or God knows what, right? So I lost everything. Yeah, the worst possible outcome that I couldn't envision at the time. And like every other traumatic experience, right? If I took you back to any traumatic experience and you fast forward that thing five, 10 years, I guarantee that 99% of them would be the best blessing. Like the thing that really sets you apart. So honestly, today, if that happened, I'd be like, all right, look, that's exactly what was supposed to happen. What's the lesson here? Why did that happen? Like, what was the thing that I was supposed to learn? And what's the next thing that I'm building? So I would, I would honestly not have anything about it. It would just be more of reevaluate. Like, did, did I miss something? Did I screw something over? Did I, you know, someone over, etc. And then just go right back to, to transforming the world. Yeah, love it, dude. Yeah, I had a guest on uh, a, a while back, and he said that success to him or you know, he used to think success was financial, right? He goes, now I've learned that success is when I go to bed every single night, if I wake up and it's all gone, um, I can rebuild it. So no longer do I have that fear, you know, and it's, it's such a great place to be. So true. Um, all right, dude. So, uh, I know that, uh, you you do a ton of these podcasts, you do a ton of these interviews. Um, you've got people picking your brain all day long. Like what is, is there a question that, that nobody ever asks you that you feel is so important to go out there and create success in any aspect of your life, but you never get asked that you wish you would be asked. Hmm. What question do I never get asked? That's really good. Um, what question do I never get asked? Wow, that's a stumper. Um, I don't know that there's a question I'd never get asked. Um, you did ask very good questions, by the way. Um, yeah, I can't, I mean, I think the important questions are ones that you ask, like, 
like what's happened in life and, and how you overcame it and things like that. Um, what have I never been asked? Or, or just, you know, don't get asked, you know, because so many people, like, for example, when, when people reach out to me for the real estate business, it's all, all they want to talk about is lead generation, you know, but they're not yeah. focusing on those truly important things, you know. Um, so it may not have to be a question you never get asked, but just something that uh, entrepreneurs need to focus on, you know, right? Um, again, I, I mean, we've kind of talked about this whole, like, the, the entire podcast. I think the majority of people focus on more of the doing than the being. They focus more on the external than the internal. And I know it's not sexy to work on the internal because it doesn't necessarily feel like there's an external result. We are very action driven. Human beings are very action driven. Like, you know, you want to be able to see the ball shot and like you want to see whether you got in the basket or didn't because that gives you a guide. Internal work is you're just shooting, right? Like you have no idea that I scored and I not score because it's not instant and it just that that thing takes time. But I can guarantee you your reality, everything, your relationships, your circumstances, financial health, all of it is 100 percent predicated on what's happening inside. A hundred percent. You want to alter something. You want a situation or a person out of your life or in your life. That's not going to happen by you pushing and moving mountains and like manipulating and doing shit. It just doesn't work that way. Because even if it does, it will not, it's not sustainable. Like it will be like a, a light that explodes and you'll have that, that brink, like that moment of light and then it'll just be dark again. You want to build long-term success. You want to have a business that, that you that you can sleep at night and and wake up and just be excited to be there that's all internal work because your business will show up by the virtue of how you are in the inside like people that are fit the reason i i mean listen i'm not i know it's kind of a generalization but like your outside is what's happening on the inside when you're 300 pounds i don't care how happy you are and you're smiling and this and that, I know that inside it's it's not good, right? Like you have issues about your body, about your self-worth, about your self-image. Your outside manifests the inside. So it's like, why with a body is that different than your business and your relationships? Like you want, you want me to tell you how good you are? Like, let me find out about how your relationships are with your, with your parents, your wife and your siblings and your kids. Like. I can tell you more about who you are as a human being than that, than you being like, well, I made a million dollars last year. Who gives a shit? Yep. So uh, that's the thing. Like, I think spend more time, more money on this. And even though it's not immediate, like, like there's not like a, you know, A equals B type of thing, but the results, like you want real results, you'll get much better results if you focus on that stuff. Yeah. Love it. Couldn't agree more, man. Um, I know we talked about Satori Prime and, and where to go to, to the website there. And those of you that are watching or listening, the links will be right below where you can go directly to there, check out, uh, um, learn more about Elon and, and different training, coaching products that he has. Um, but we didn't talk about your podcast, right? I know you've got a badass yep. podcast, dude. Know that it, it, it podcast is similar, interviewing a lot of uber successful yep. entrepreneurs out there. Um, so you guys really need to go check it out. Where, where's the best place to check that out? Um, it's just It's called the Performance Enhancing Podcast. Um, you can find it on the website. You can find it on satoriprime.com as well, or you could search for it on iTunes. Um, we have, we also post all the videos like you do on YouTube as well. Um, so some people choose to watch them on YouTube, some people on iTunes, but yeah, the performance enhancing podcast. Yep. Go check that out. You guys. Um, all right, dude. So, so, um, and this is what we'll, we'll end the podcast with, but I'm sure just like you started your podcast, you know, we get to a point where we just get so sick of all the smoke and, and mirrors. And I got to a point where I'm like, man, I just want to go out there and interview the doers. There's all these, yep. these quote unquote gurus that have never actually went out there and done it, right? So I'm like, yep. I'm just going to create a space where I go out there and interview dudes like yourself that are in the trenches, that are out there creating epic lives, epic businesses, and, and interview you and get your story and then and then deliver that story to the world. Um, with that being said, man, our listeners are listening to this right now because they want more for themselves and for their family mm. so what what uh you know last words of maybe motivation inspiration that you would give to our, uh, our listeners to go out there and create the epic life that they know they want and deserve oh great um i think 
the, the first place to start is just get that where you are right now is perfect. It shouldn't be some other way. It doesn't need to be another way. It is exactly how it needs to be. If you're in an argument with where you are or that it should be some other way, you're, you're already checked out, right? Like that's ego. So get that exactly where you are is perfect. From there, now you can grow, you can develop, right? So again, people struggle with money, right? But if you're hungry or yearning for money, in that yearning, you're basically saying to the universe, like, I don't have this, right? I have a lack of this. So you start creating these ideas of abundance. Like if you're abundant, like if you feel abundant today, that's going to manifest more abundance. If you feel balanced today, that's going to manifest more balance. But if your whole thing is like, well, it should be some, some other way, or I should have started with this amount of money. Well, fuck no, you can't. That's what you got. You got what you got right now. You don't got what you don't got. So I think for people that are starting, like we get to be, get hung up on, on looking like people like you or me and wh whomever and going, I want that life, but you don't know what we went through. If I wrote you down a list of like all the travesties and heartaches and things like that, that, that I went through or Josh went through, you'd be like, I don't want that. Right. And just, you're going to go through those. That's clear. Just know that like that's, that's the process and just start from giving yourself freedom around where you are and giving yourself freedom that it doesn't need to happen tomorrow. Like success takes time. The longer your view of success is, the more successful you can be. You're making decisions based off of what your business is gonna be 10 years from now, not what it's gonna be a month from now. Right? Like invest, I mean, real estate investors, like a perfect example, right? Like getting in and out of properties, getting in and out of properties. And every time they do that, they miss a long-term opportunity. If you can hold a house for 30, 40, 50 years, like, I don't care really what's happening in the world. You're going to make money, right? If you're trying to sell a house or flip a house in like three months, I mean, there's a lot of emotion and angst and shit like that. So just get where you are is perfect and, and have a longer vision of your success. And you'll do great. Yeah, love it. Powerful words. And to, our, to our, those of you watching and listening, I know I end every podcast with this, you guys, but information without implementation is truly just the start of delusion. If information isn't power. It's taking that information, uh, uh, executing on it, taking action on it that creates power in your world. So Elon shared so many uh, just amazing piece of advice, so many golden nuggets, you guys. There, Take something that you learned today. Go, Don't wait. Go out there and take action right now immediately so you can go out there and create the power that you know you want inside your world. And um, Elon, man, this has been <laughs> this has been a massive honor. It's been a hell of a time, man. I, I, I love high conscious successful entrepreneurs like yourself man and like i said i could literally wrap here for another 12 hours um but this has been such a massive honor to, i really appreciate you being here my friend it's been an absolute honor it was a great great interview you do uh you do amazing work and i just for for those people listening like i've actually grilled josh a while back about like his business and what he does i, I mean i there aren't many people that that work as hard as you that have the kind of life balance that you do um, so for anyone listening, like, keep listening. This is a good, good dude to uh, to keep listening to. Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. It means a lot, and thank you guys so much for listening. And we will see you next time. Peace.